On the internet, you are allowed to have one of two opinions about Rayman. It is either an artistic masterpiece with enough unparalleled mechanical prowess to kickstart not just an entire franchise, but an entire corporation. Or it is a fucking stupid bullshit nightmare that drops off a cliff after the first world. Alternatively, it is both, and that was definitely my takeaway when I first played the game. I wanted to love Rayman. It's an absolutely gorgeous 2D platformer with so much going for it, but Rayman does not love me back. And that's coming from some Someone who usually loves difficult games. I've beaten Silver Surfer, Subterranea, The Adventures of Batman and Robin, and Aero Blasters for the TurboGrafx-16, so I hope it means something when I say all of those games put together don't even constitute a fraction of the sheer vindictive hatred that Rayman threw at me non-stop while I had the audacity to be in its presence. All of that is despite the fact that it has limited continues. I defend limited continues a lot, but when a game is as dirty as Rayman, I have no problem playing dirty in return. I brute forced my way through the entire game with unlimited lives and I do not feel sorry about it. Fast forward two years. While on a road trip with my boyfriend, I happened upon a dusty Atari Jaguar in the back room of Game Doctors, the last independent game store in Wyoming which originally caught my eye because the awning clearly has not been updated since it originally opened. Needless to say, yeah, it was an absolute time capsule and I highly recommend it if you're ever in Casper. It's the only Atari Jaguar I've ever seen with my own eyes, and my mind immediately raced back to the years I spent lurking around Atari age, watching old collection videos and just generally interacting with people three times my age. Simpler times. Times when I could actually ogle at the Atari Jaguar version of Rayman and think, wow, this game is probably not complete horseshit. Now, with an Atari Jaguar on hand, I found it too tempting not to live out that childhood fantasy. So, I played Rayman, and then I played a lot of Rayman, and then I beat the game without cheats for the first time in my life, and I felt compelled to report my experiences. You have been lied to! Reviewers have done everything in their power to dissuade me from the Atari Jaguar version, saying it has terrible music, a bunch of cut content, and runs on a platform that nobody in the right mind would ever own. I've heard the Atari Jaguar version of Rayman likened to a prototype of subsequent releases. I've heard the Atari Jaguar version of Rayman relegated to a joke. Isn't it funny? These silly developers thought they could make a next-generation franchise on the gross Atari Jaguar. I mean, look at that keypad controller. It's a good thing the game developers came to their senses and released Rayman on the correct video game console. These versions are so much better! No, they're not! Ubisoft decided that Rayman would be a launch title for the system in North America and Europe. Ubisoft apparently saw the writing on the wall with the Jaguar before Rayman's release, and began developing ports for the PlayStation, Sega Saturn, and DOS PCs. In an interview with Jaguar fan site French Touch, Rayman programmer Frederick Marcus claimed that Sony and Sega approached Ubisoft about getting their own conversions of Rayman, not the other way around as is so commonly framed. It was never a foregone conclusion that Rayman would be this optical media tour de force as it's known today at the dawn of the real fifth generation. But those two conglomerates had to use the technical term a shitload more money than Atari. The version differences amount to so much more than cosmetics, and the Atari Jaguar version is hard, and it still does have bullshit, but it is nowhere near as actively painful as the PlayStation and Saturn versions. Those are obviously tall claims, but allow me to put my money where my mouth is. In preparation for this video, I played through every home console version of Rayman. First Jaguar, then Saturn, then PlayStation. All three of these were original copies on real hardware. No Satiator, no Game Drive, no pirated disc, and no emulators. I played through this game the exact way it would have been played in 1995. By extension, I did not use extra live codes, save states, or third-party controllers. I hope you appreciate how long it took to get that shot. I'll mostly be comparing the Jaguar against the Saturn version, because the Saturn version is widely considered to be the best version of this game, but I'll also note the differences between the Saturn and PlayStation versions whenever they're relevant. Before getting into the design changes, though, I feel it's only fair to acknowledge where the Jaguar version is lacking. First and foremost, the music on the Jaguar does not hold a can handle to the music on CD. Jaguar music is a strange beast because it doesn't have any dedicated sound hardware, so the spectrum of quality is across the board. All of the Imagitech games are absolute masterpieces. Some games have good melodies which are woefully unoptimized on the Jaguar. Some games treat music as an absolute afterthought. Okay, I gotta, I gotta turn the music on full blast. And some games are so taxing on the hardware that in-game music is literally impossible. Yeah. Rayman falls somewhere in the middle. It's not bad music, I would dare even argue it is good music, but it is not Rayman music. 
Rayman is a masterclass of ambience, one of the best soundtracks ever made and one of the final nails in the coffin for cartridges. Jaguar music feels, for lack of a better way of putting it, very video gamey. Music is shorter, it's reused a lot, and it's very tailor-made for looping. Everything is also in mono, which is pretty underwhelming even by Jaguar standards. Don't get it twisted, these are not criticisms in 99% of all video games, but we're talking about THE video game soundtrack, and it's impossible not to feel like something is missing. The Jaguar version is also lacking a lot of graphical assets. Several stage backgrounds are missing, and of the ones that aren't, they only have one or two layers of parallax. Rayman himself is also missing a few animations. Most of these changes simply amount to a 4 megabyte cartridge game suddenly finding itself with unwitting access to the inconceivable vastness of space on a CD. So these aren't so much faults with the Jaguar version as they are perks of the Saturn version, and that's a double-edged sword 30 years later. The load times are way, way, way faster. I know it's an unfair comparison, but in any playthrough of this game, I cannot stress enough how often you are going to reset. So the extra 15 seconds it takes to reload from a soft reset on original hardware and software gets very palpable. For that matter, unlike the Saturn and Jaguar, the PS1 version doesn't even have a button combination for soft resetting. All of that is on a technical level though, so how about gameplay? CD versions have a rope cutting section in Mr. Stone's Peach, which the Jaguar version lacks, the second section in Anguish Lagoon, the third section in Eraser Plains, and the entirety of Mr. Dark's Dare are also completely different different between versions. I personally prefer the Jaguar's take on Anguish Lagoon and Eraser Plains, but Mr. Dark Stare is a disappointing downgrade relative to the CD versions. It has needlessly tight platforming sections in place of an otherwise interesting and dynamic fight with Dark Rayman. The Jaguar version is also missing an additional phase of the final boss, making it easier than it should be. That's the only time you're gonna hear that sentence for the rest of this video. The Saturn version in particular also has beautiful lighting effects that put its reputation as a 2D powerhouse to good use. Other than that, the locations of some cages are slightly different, and that's it. At least that's as far as positive changes are concerned. Pretty much all it boils down to is that the Jaguar version is on a cartridge and the Saturn version is on a CD. So on a presentational level, yeah, a lot of people are setting the Jaguar version of Rayman up for a fight it was destined to lose because it's on a 4 megabyte cartridge. The gameplay differences, the differences which matter most, are what will constitute a majority of this analysis. First and foremost, presentation is not actually a sweeping win for the CD version across the board. It's a win overall, but the Jaguar version does a few things slightly better. For example, the camera. In the Jaguar version, Rayman is generally in or near the center of the screen. The camera quickly snaps to Rayman's position regardless of speed or axis. In the CD versions, though, the camera is much slower and more sweeping. It pans to either side depending on which direction Rayman is moving. Crucially, though, it does not pan depending on which direction Rayman is facing. If you're on a moving platform, the camera jolts back and forth in very extreme fashion beyond your control, which invariably leads to the game's trademark off-screen bullshit. The camera being slower also makes vertical jumps practically blind. Rayman constantly hugs the top of the screen in the CD versions, and it makes for a less fluid experience than the Jaguar original. To be fair though, the Jaguar version can also be static to a fault. This game is exploration-based, so the inability to look up or down feels like a very glaring omission. There are also a few presentational differences which I subjectively prefer on Jaguar. For example, this font is amazing. I love this font, and shame on the Sega Saturn for having a lame, small, inferior font. Jaguar Rayman even says action at the start of every stage, and that's cool! The CD versions have some really obvious color banding issues with certain backgrounds that the Atari Jaguar mitigates on account of its weird proprietary CRY color palette. The Saturn version in particular also has a really bad case of SOTN, if you know what I mean. Finally, the CD versions lack a death animation for the first Space Mama fights, and I have no no idea why. Such arbitrary changes extend to the most integral mechanics of the game. In the CD versions, Rayman has a slightly lower jump arc. It's not by much, but it's still a deliberate change which breaks the level design around it. The first section of Twilight Gulch has a rather infamous cage which is so elevated that it requires the running ability and a nearly frame-perfect punch in order to hit. That jump is stupid impossible. It's just as hard in the speedrun as it is casually. I've always said that I'm convinced that the devs did it one time, threw it up there, they got it first try, and they were like, okay, obviously I guess that works out. It's stupid. That's just on the PlayStation version, though. On Saturn, a slightly longer punch makes the jump arc possible without running, albeit still very difficult. In the Jaguar version, though, not only does it not require the running ability, timing is pretty lenient. The level was clearly designed around the higher jump arc, which every subsequent port went out of its way to neuter without properly considering its implications. This malice is even more evident with the tethering mechanic. 
In the Jaguar version, tethers are a very static affair. Regardless of one's orientation on the swing, jumping will have a fixed arc. In the CD versions, however, tethers are kinetic. If you're on the upswing, your jump is higher. If you're on the downswing, your jump is lower. I like these changes on a conceptual level. If you preserve your momentum, tethers can be a really dynamic tool for speedrunning and it allows you to engage with your environment more meaningfully. With that said, the late game has a habit of abusing the ever-loving shit out of tethers over bottomless pits where there is no environment to engage with, and that's not fun, that's infuriating. And I like this part because you always make it onto the red platform so easily. They designed it for this version, and then it actually really sucked in PS1. With a fixed jump arc, these feel more like actual obstacles than avenues to drain you of all your lives. Helping the Jaguar's case is the fact that when you tether onto a wall, you simply bounce away from it, and if you do the same thing on Saturn, you lose your grip! To that end, the CD versions have momentum, which makes platforming way more stiff than it needs to be. If you run or even walk into a jump, it takes considerable force to maneuver mid-air. This makes knockback recovery a blatant illusion, while on the Jaguar, Jaguar, you have absolute freedom in the air. Fine-tuning such movement is a kinetic part of Rayman which simply doesn't exist in subsequent versions. In its place is a skidding mechanic if you dare try to run along surfaces. If you accidentally hit the run button while orienting yourself for a jump, Rayman kindly fucking offs himself in spectacular fashion. Again, you lose fine-tuning and precision with these mechanics in place, and if Rayman is going to demand platforming like this, I feel it's only appropriate that the controls accommodate accordingly. In the Jaguar version, they do. In the CD versions, they don't. I cannot stress enough how natural it felt to not have skidding mechanics or jump momentum when I played through Jaguar Rayman for the first time. I literally forgot they existed until having to replay the Saturn version for this video. Another change in that same vein was the introduction of ice physics in the CD versions. This difference is definitely more stark. I will acknowledge that in certain areas it feels like the Jaguar version only lacks ice physics due to hardware limitations. After all, as far as I know, these three tings and bongo hills are literally impossible to get in the Jaguar version version. However, if ice physics were really always the artistic vision for Rayman, would Ubisoft care to explain to the class why it thought this section in Allegro Presto was ever okay? I mean, what's even going on here? This isn't level design. Look, how do you expect people to do this? Like with all too many mechanics in Rayman, this idea gets absolutely abused in the later levels for absolutely no good reason. What is gained from this platform in Space Mama's crater having ice physics? It feels like an arbitrary way to make the game harder when the and it could have just as easily been implemented more tastefully, or in the Jaguar's case, not at all. Checkpoints are agonizingly difficult to interact with on icy platforms. On the Jaguar, you don't even need to stop. Simply walking into the checkpoint will trigger it. The same applies to bonus games, which on CD are way more finicky to interact with than they have any reason to. The Jaguar version also edges out with the minigame itself in the realm of obvious no-brainer stuff. The timer displays in exact milliseconds on Jaguar but not on CD, and the tin counter also counts down on Jaguar but counts up on CD. This creeps into the realm of bafflingly stupid changes which make no fucking sense, but more on that later. The Jaguar version also lacks the shrinking mechanic. In the case of tethering and ice physics, the case could at least be made that these mechanics combine to make a more interesting skill ceiling. I get it, I also love watching speedruns, and the things they manage are incredible. On that note, I defy you to think of one good reason why Tiny Rayman should exist. It reduces mobility rather than enhancing it, and it dumbs down platforming to the most basic level. Furthermore, it feels like padding because he walks so slow. Take this section in Bongo Hills. In the Jaguar version, you simply need to take a 15 second detour to get the cage and move on with your life. In the CD versions, however, you need to make it all the way to the first checkpoint before backtracking to the start of the level as Tiny Rayman, grab the cage through an impassable crevasse, and redo the moving platform section with reduced mobility over an instant death pit. It's obvious padding with several opportunities for the player to die along the way. All of these are obvious fundamental changes to Rayman's overall flow, but I cannot stress enough how often the CD versions of Rayman go out of their way to make the experience harder. You get the item because you need it, and doing so triggers more hazards to appear, because every advantage must be accompanied with a disadvantage. Mechanical tweaks are only the tip of the iceberg. The CD versions introduce more obstacles, make jumps tight and remove certain
certain safety harbors and such arbitrary alterations exist in nearly every level of the game. In the Jaguar version, clouds open their eyes immediately before vanishing. That's telegraphing. That's a good thing. In the CD versions, this telegraph no longer exists. In this section of Bongo Hills, the CD versions remove multiple clouds, replace those clouds with moving platforms, and add additional spikes. In this section of Twilight Gulch, the Jaguar version has two exploding boulders, the Saturn version has five, and the PlayStation version has nine! In section two of Pencil Pentathlon, the game cranks up the amount of pencils and thumbtacks you need to dodge across the board. In Crystal Palace, the falling rock section is way the fuck faster. In Space Mama's Crater, god, don't even get me started. Okay, so... This Yin Yang Ball doesn't exist in the Jaguar version, which is as blatant of an admission as any that the jump arc was needlessly fucked with, but also, they doubled the amount of spikes in route to this 1-up, and you also cannot crawl underneath them on the way down despite being Tiny Rayman, but you can on the way back up? Section 3 also has way more spikes everywhere! Literally, name a place where spikes are an obstacle and the CD version has twice as many! The CD versions also have 4 spike balls compared to the Jaguar's 1, and if I haven't played this game a billion times by now, I would take more umbrage with that. In its defense, the CD CD version has one additional checkpoint after the obstacle, but that is honestly nothing compared to this. I'm sure this is technically possible on the Jaguar version, which is bullshit in and of itself, but the Jaguar version spawns a platform for you to get your bearings with. In the CD version, you just have to know to jump while it's moving away from you or risk accidentally completing the level when there's still a cage remaining, dooming you to have to replay the entire thing to get back to it. Space Mama herself, however, is the entire reason why I felt the need to make this video. She's widely regarded to be the hardest boss in the game after one of the hardest levels in the game, and yeah, she is. And they lower their defenses very rarely, so fights can take several minutes. The entire time, you're dodging tricky attack patterns that grow more difficult as the fight goes on. My first time playing through, I probably died here a few dozen times. The Saturn also had architecture that was just better optimized for 2D games than the PS1. Or N64, or 3DO, or PCFX, or Atari Jaguar, if you're that kind of person. That was with Unlimited Lives, so I prepared for the worst on the Jaguar as well, and I beat her on my very first try. With leftover health. <laughs> How did we get here? Remember what I said about the Jaguar version omitting the checkpoint directly before the boss? Guess what that also cuts out? Also at the start of the fight itself, guess what power-up is free for the taking on the Jaguar which the CD versions so kindly go out of their way to get rid of. In other words, if you thought Space Mama was the hardest boss in the game, that's probably because you were playing it with, I don't know, three times less health than the game originally intended? For that matter, the fight itself has drastically easier attack patterns. You don't need to crawl for a majority of this phase, and the fact that everything spawns higher up gives you more reaction time. Also, the washing machine doesn't hurt you, or if it does, it has one of the dumbest hitboxes in the entire game. Game. Frankly, I've played so much goddamn Rayman for this video that neither version of Space Mama takes me more than a few tries anymore, but Space Mama's Crater is only the second most difficult level in this game. It's a walk in the park compared to the sheer vindictiveness of Ida Joe's. The first difference is abundantly visible from the moment you enter the stage. Keyword visible. Do you notice it? Look a little closer, you're a smart cookie. In its defense, the PlayStation version is slightly easier than the Saturn version on account of better visibility, improved brightness, and not having the awful flicker effect, but I'm not a fan either way. This is not subversive, or even particularly difficult. It just implores the player to wait a few extra minutes and die a few extra times after a full game of engaging with these levels antithetically. Rayman is about exploration, fucking around and finding out. In most levels, it rewards venturing into the unknown. In this level, though, the CD versions throw all of that out the window. The second screen has most of the same trappings we've come to expect. In exchange for a few extra life locations, the CD version sees it fit to add random spikes and also a random boulder in case you didn't already get hit. Directly below it adds more enemies for the sake of adding more enemies. This tethering section is significantly easier on Jaguar on account of simplified tethering mechanics. The rest of the section is mostly similar though, only with the added sin of not telegraphing if slash when clouds disappear over spike pits as per usual. The third section omits a tether at the very beginning. Also, these enemies behave way more aggressively in the CD versions. In the Jaguar version, they don't cling to the ceilings in little cubby holes where they're impossible to reach. In exchange, the Jaguar version lacks one extra life in this one ting for some reason. In Section 4, this platform moves at a less consistent speed in the CD versions, but it's almost always faster. It also has more enemies to dodge. 
naturally. Overall, though, it's not that egregious. Section 4, on the other hand, is pure evil. It doesn't look that different between versions, and in terms of actual level design, it isn't. The only tangible difference is that the CD versions introduce two spike balls midway through because of course they do. Everything is in the overall experience of getting yourself from one end of the screen to another. First of all, these balls behave slightly differently. When Fish nudge the ball in the Jaguar, it's quick and discreet. In the CD versions, though, it's much more gradual and they never fully stop. Your platform is always moving ever so slightly, and as such, the entire section is much faster. On Jaguar, the balls bob up and down slowly with a static animation. On the CD versions, though, Rayman's weight bobs them downward. As such, Rayman's jump arc is essentially made even shorter than usual. These absolutely wonderful projectiles also have a more unforgiving pattern on the CD version, always bearing in mind that you're floating on a tiny moving platform above instant death, of course. To top it all off, though, I must remind you the CD versions have a prolonged hit stun recovery and momentum. When Rayman gets hit by anything, he throws himself off by about five feet from wherever he was giving you no chance at recovering yourself, so you're just going to drown. Getting hit here, anywhere, is tantamount to instant death. On Jaguar, you at least have one final line of defense, and it makes an absolutely massive impact. On top of that, the fish in this section are so much more aggressive in the CD versions. They behave similarly in both, as long as you know when they lunge, you can still jump at the right time, but in the CD versions, they lunge so much more frequently, and they move so much farther. This is another example of where it would be really nice to have a camera that doesn't violently jolt to either side depending on which direction you face, but I digress. The combination of factors here, from the added spikes to the more aggressive AI to the faster pace to the lack of a hit stun recovery, feels very tailor-made to serve as a brick wall for anyone who doesn't have enough lives at this point to rogue memorize everything through pure trial and error. On the Jaguar, this section took me six attempts. It's hard, but it's not an unreasonable difficulty spike for the late game. On Saturn, this section took me 25 attempts. Do you want to know how many times I died in this section on the PlayStation version? Zero! I literally blasted through all of it on my very first attempt, because it's not hard! I don't feel any more skilled for the part, I just feel like I spent an hour learning how to parrot a string of inputs because the Saturn playthrough taught me any deviation from that string of inputs would invariably result in death. The Jaguar version still takes time to learn, but at least recovery is possible. That learning curve is nowhere near as unpleasant and unforgiving. In the context of the time, arbitrarily jacking up difficulty was not an uncommon practice. The American American version of a stall gave you three hit points instead of five, the American version of Bug had a broken save system, and Working Designs had an all-around reputation for stat-boosting enemies to high hell, especially in Lunar Eternal Blue. All of these games came out in the summer of 1995 alone, so this example blends in on a surface level, but Rayman is a unique case study for a few reasons. Every other example of this phenomenon is on a regional basis, not on a console-by-console -console basis. A stall and Lunar are Japanese games that were made harder in America to take advantage of the rental industry. Bug was an American game made easier in Japan because the rental industry was insignificant. Rayman, however, is a Western game for a Western audience. The Atari Jaguar practically did not exist in Japan, while the PlayStation and Saturn sure as hell did. The Japanese version of Rayman is so obscure that Wikipedia doesn't even have it listed as an official release. It absolutely screams Euro platformer, and Euro platformers already have a reputation for being frustrating, so why make a hard game even harder? The quote-unquote official reason for Rayman Man's difficulty is its lack of proper playtesting. <laughs> If programmers playtest the game exclusively, you can expect them to sniff out bugs like a bloodhound, but they will have absolutely zero foundational ability to put the difficulty of their own game into perspective. In the 90s, this was commonplace. The aforementioned bug is another example of a game made excessively difficult on account of insufficient playtesting. As such, while I can't claim to know exactly why the Jaguar version is so much easier compared to subsequent releases, I posit the obsessive perfectionist theory. Rayman is what happens when you give an artist a nearly unlimited amount of resources to make whatever game they want, and that troubled development cycle is worth taking into consideration when questioning why the game is the way it is. This game went from being on the Atari ST, to the SNES, to the Jaguar, to the PlayStation before it ever saw any widespread success. 
The Jaguar version credits 60 people, and if you have a hard time putting that into perspective, the Jaguar's other famous French game, Super Burnout, credits 19 people, 9 of which were playtesters. Probably unpaid playtesters if this interview is of any indication. That's not where it ends, either. The PlayStation version credits 76 people, and the Saturn version credits 85 people. It seems Ubisoft funneled more and more resources into this game the further it got in development. Obviously, this worked out for them, but it's worth remembering that Rayman was originally going to be a Jaguar exclusive. That kind of budget for that kind of market doesn't exactly make sense. As such, it doesn't seem unfair to assume the Jaguar version probably had a low priority within Ubisoft midway through development. In other words, the Jaguar version had enough focus early on for the sake of mechanical fundamentals, but as soon as the PS1 proved to be a more lucrative option, it became the priority. When developers only pour hundreds of collective hours into designing levels as opposed to thousands, they probably have less of a chance to master its mechanics and retroactively decide the game is too easy. From there, the PlayStation version was probably forced to implement aesthetic changes from on high. The game was in its fourth overall incarnation, and if it didn't go over perfectly, that 15 million franc investment probably would have dealt a major blow to the company. Difficulty be damned, it had entire consoles to sell, and in that regard, the PlayStation version of Rayman did a far better job than the Jaguar version. In the public consciousness, Rayman is the PlayStation game. In less than five years, the PlayStation became the best-selling video game console of all time, and Rayman was one of the top 40 best selling games in the United Kingdom that entire time. Even in America, 49 out of every 50 copies you'll see are from the 1997 Greatest Hits reissue. 1995 longbox versions are comparatively rare. Although Rayman very much feels like a love letter to extremely hardcore Euro platformer fans, the average person who played this game in the 90s probably had a completely different mindset. If that is the echelon we're working with, I don't blame anyone for writing off the Atari Jaguar version. I get it, the Atari Jaguar is alien and niche and you're not supposed to like it. This game, this console, and this controller combined are worth north of $400, so it's easy to treat this version of Rayman as a historical oddity. I also understand that modern fan remakes like Rayman Redemption render the 1995 original somewhat obsolete. If you want a casual Rayman experience, I would suggest something along those lines. But Jaguar accessibility is making leaps and bounds nowadays. We have flash cartridges, full compatibility emulators, and an active homebrew community aiming to make this dumbass console the best it can be. If you're going to make the 10 millionth review of this game for a captive audience who will never lay eyes on an Atari Jaguar in their entire lives, maybe don't write this version off completely. Did you, did you see Rayman? Uh, there's a little demo, isn't there? Oh, you can play it actually. It looks oh. really rendered. Oh man, this music. What doom porn are you taking for me, twins? <laughs> You're free to o doom. You're slow, can't process much, do just about everything. <laughs>